Hey guys, Dirkarian here, and we're back with another Last Epoch video. It's been a while, but we're back. Now, I did take a break from Last Epoch to make other content, but when the new cycle starts on July 9th or July 10th, wherever you are in the world, we're going to be blasting to get to the pinnacle bosses, which is part of the new content. So let's quickly break down what's happening in the next cycle. Now, we have a huge forum post from EHG with the new things that are going to be part of this patch. So the new patch and new cycle is titled Harbingers of Ruin. There's also a trailer here. I'll leave a link in the description down below to the trailer so you can check that out. So let's start off with the new mechanic which is evade. So evade is basically just a dodge roll and for each character the evade is going to be different. So for certain characters you might actually roll, other characters it might actually like dash. We can see here evade rapidly move a short distance. The other thing as well is the evade doesn't grant damage immunity or prevent abilities from hitting you. So it's not an iframe and you get two charges and there's a cooldown on your evade. So it does say here that the most important thing with the evade mechanic is it allows us to assume a baseline of mobility for all characters. And that means that they can make harder content for the game. And of course, because of the evade mechanic, there's gonna be items that pair well with the evade as well. So you can see here we have the Flight of Quitsuri, uh, which basically gives you an evade charge. It gives you haste after you use a traversal skill. So this one will be really good for movement because you'll be getting a lot of the evade charges as well as the haste when you evade as well. This also means that certain characters that take a traversal skill will now be extremely mobile because you got the evade, you have the traversal, you also have the haste as well. This will make it so that certain characters are just gonna be dashing across the screen and basically just impossible to catch. Next, we have the Nemesis system that will be introduced in the next cycle. So this is the Nemesis system. Essentially, you've got like these items. You can choose to banish, empower, or challenge. And essentially, if you challenge, you'll get all of these items. If you banish, you'll get rid of these items. And if you empower, you'll have a chance to put in an item and increase the stats on that item. So this is probably the one that we're going to be looking at most of the time. The final option will allow you to empower the nemesis. By selecting empower, the nemesis will awaken and attack you in its rage. Upon defeat, it will flee instead of dropping its items. You will encounter the same nemesis again next time, which will have the same items available, but giving potentially increased Affix tiers, fortune potential, or legendary potential. Empowering a nemesis can also add new affixes to items, including non experimental sealed affixes. Empowering is able to upgrade sealed affixes all the way to ranks six or seven, which hasn't been possible before. You'll be able to buff your gear, making it so that your sealed affixes can increase its ranks and also have a chance to give items legendary potential as well. You can empower a nemesis twice, increasing the quality of the rewards as well as the power of the nemesis holding them. Once an empowered nemesis has been defeated or banished, the next nemesis encounter will start over as unempowered with new items. And then we've got this new item which will interact with the nemesis system. This is the egg of the forgotten. Can be replaced with a unique item that lacks both legendary potential and weave as well. Changes into a random unique if dropped or empowered. So if you empower this item, it will change into a random unique. That's pretty cool. Then we have getting into the pinnacle boss system. We have the harbingers and forgotten knights. This will basically allow you to get to the pinnacle boss. So we're interacting with the harbingers. These are enemies that you'll be defeating. You'll need to defeat harbingers in each of the 10 timelines before being able to access the portal to the most difficult fight in last epoch to date. You'll also have a chance to harvest an eye from a harbinger upon defeating them, which you will use as currency to access the pinnacle boss. So essentially you'll be fighting the pinnacle boss by defeating the harbingers in the monolith timeline. After defeating the first harbinger, you will begin your journey with the Forgotten Knights faction. So you'll get, become part of a faction. Now this is different to the Merchant's Guild and Circle of Fortune faction. So you'll just have access to this. So you don't need to join one or the other. You'll just be part of the Forgotten Knights faction. And this will give you buffs to your monoliths. So if you look at the graphic, some of the blessings will buff the amount of corruption you get. It'll buff your blessings, it'll buff your items and your glyphs and things like that as well. So this will be a good addition to changing how monolith farming will work. And so leading on from that, we have the pinnacle boss, which will basically be the hardest boss in last epoch. So we're going to be grinding to fight the pinnacle boss. The other thing to note is before they had the dynamic damage reduction, this was a system where the bosses 
got damage reduction after a set period of time and it would be really difficult to defeat bosses. So now what they've done is they've made it so that instead of damage reduction, this kind of this is like a different version of damage reduction. What they've done is at certain points in time, bosses will gain damage reduction in the form of ward. So they'll gain a lot of ward. This ward will decay. And then once you get to the next pip, that again, that will occur again. And then finally the last pip, there we have another set of damage reduction. This is to kind of stop you from one-shotting bosses and things. You can obviously do this if your damage is insanely high. It's to make it a little bit more challenging when you defeat bosses. So I think the system is pretty cool. It's definitely better than the damage reduction system they had before. So they've said here in response to this feedback, we're replacing boss dynamic damage reduction with boss ward system. With this new system, as a boss reaches predetermined breakpoints, it will gain a burst of ward, then decays over time. The longer the ward is present, the faster it will decay. The goals of this is the same as the DR system, that bosses are given a better opportunity to exist and fight back without punishing lower DPS builds that already get this experience. Next is the Glyph of Envy, a very common feedback it is very slow to progress through the monoliths on subsequent characters. So the Glyph of Envy is now a new system whereby on your second or third characters, you can gain a lot of corruption and progress the corruption on those characters if you've already done it on a first character. So you'll be using the Glyph of Envy to do that. I will be making a guide on how to do this when the game actually comes out because I do plan to play a few characters this cycle. So it does say here by upgrading an affix using a glyph of envy it has two effects one on the item itself and the second effect on your most recently assessed timeline on the item it will upgrade the selected affix as normal in addition every other property of the item will be changed other than the item type this means a ring will remain a ring but the three other affixes as well as the subtype can be randomized to a completely new stat so the upgrading portion of this won't necessarily apply too much i think normally you'll just kind of take a bad item and just upgrade it for the secondary effect which is that it grants you stability and allows you to accelerate the timeline for those other monoliths on your second or third characters it says glyph of envy can only be found in level 100 zones and drops most commonly from rares and harbingers next is the harbingers needle so we have something to help you with the corruption of the timeline um, the harbingers needle breaks when you kill a timeline boss above 90 corruption, grant, causing that timeline boss to grant three Gaze of Oribus. And the Gaze of Oribus is to help you increase your monolith corruption as well. So this is another tool to help pushing for higher difficulty. And I think that's a really good adjustment to the game. Then we've got new unique items. So we'll be they'll be getting 30 new unique items. And let's have a look at the graphic just to see what type of items there are. You've got the wall of nothing, which gives you ward and ward decay. 12% uh, chance to take zero damage when hit. We've got 70% uh, of endurance threshold added as ward decay threshold and 32 ward per second. So this will be like a ward endurance type of item. Uh, we have a void cleared focused and a black arrow focused item as well. So these are going to be interesting items to see what the new meta of the game will be. I do know that in the new cycle as well, there is going to be bug fixes and also a little bit of balancing happening. So it will be fun and exciting to see what those changes are going to show, which class is going to be on top, which mastery is going to dominate the meta. But yeah, that's been my run through of the new patch. The new patch is coming out soon and I do plan to be blasting Last Epoch in about a week or two when it does come out. And again, I will be making new guides for Last Epoch when the new cycle comes out as well. So stay tuned for that. Let me know your comments down below on what you think the best things about the new cycle is going to be. As always, have an awesome day. Bye for now.